uh, Mr. PhD. You're just now entering the cipher called Real to Real 360. Uh huh. KYs. Peace, God. Bring that beat in, kid. Indeed. Hey. Yeah. What's going on, party people? Welcome to the Real to Real 360 show. Let's get it in. We do the knowledge and wisdom so you can understand. Real to Real 360 shows in full command. We changing the game for how it all was taught. From bondage to freedom to an independent thought. Yo, the show is here to bring about a change for real. To lighten everyone so we all know the deal. 360 degrees is a fact. We created the show to give our love back to our communities. So we can know what's going on. And give them the support from knowledge to born. So if you're ready to learn, then it's time to go. Sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Peace. Peace, peace, peace to all our followers, listeners, and subscribers. Peace to all individuals who have taken their time out to ride this way with Real to Real 360. Also, too, want to say may peace be upon Granddaddy IU for um, the, um returning yesterday, which was a, a heavy hit and hard hit for those of us, you know what I'm saying, who grew up in Long Island. And uh, it, it's just still a blow. We still can't believe it. But today... It's going to be a fantastic day because we have a man. This man was so hard to get on this show. We're like, we done scheduled like two, three times for this man to come on to the show. And I don't care what was going on, the rain, hell, snow, and earthquakes. Today, we was going to make this happen. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Mr. Terry Wright. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, bro? No, I'm doing good, man. What's happening, man? What's I'm doing? Just, just look, been sitting waiting on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make it seem like that, okay? <laughs> right, man. I tell you, we like I said, I was been ex been excited about this interview, and yeah, it was so interesting how much love that Vic Allen has for you. You know, oh, man, like, yeah. That's your that's your partner, like man. That, that out, is man. that is man. That's your and partner. It's weird how we met. Well, we we've always known each other, but you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of artists. But we got an opportunity to do a show in Kansas and really got to know each other. And find out we, you know, like almost like we just said we're brothers, man. We real good, real good. But at this moment in time, can you give a uh, uh, let the followers and listeners know exactly who Mr. Terry Wright is? Well. This is your guy, Terry Wright. Let me tell y'all, if you heard the song, I done lost my good thing, mm -hmm. that's me. Mm -hmm. On the back road, that's where the pod is at. Mm -hmm. And a song called She Was Playing To, mm -hmm. this is the guy, Terry Wright. That's what I sing. And I'm hoping that everybody knows his music, especially the song, I done lost my good thing. But I am out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, just a little short thing about me. I've been around this music all my life. Uh, I've had an opportunity to tour with Marvin Cease I was, when it was his band leader. Uh, Sir Charles was in that band and Carl Sims when he had the big song Trap. So I've been in the business for a long time, but as an entertainer uh, myself, 19 years and counting, next year will be 20 years for me when I put out my first CD in 2003. So that's who I am, Terry Wright. Uh, um, Mr. Mr. Terry Wright, uh, how <laughs> is it that... Uh... <laughs> you know, I tell you, 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 you got to laugh about it because, like, like I, like I tell people, I said, I said, shoot, this about this, this like him being my homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, you worked with Marvin C. Marvin C. was a great legend of Southern yes. Soul. He really was. He was a legend of Southern Soul. Yeah. So you've been around some of the great legends in Southern Soul, like. Uh, Tyrone and Johnny. Johnny, all of them. Yeah. Uh, during the time when I was touring with Carl and Marvin, that's who we were doing shows with Johnny, Tyrone, Clarence Carter, mm -hmm. Bobby Womack, Betty Wright, Denise, Lattimore. Uh, all of them have had, you know, opportunity to meet and become friends with all of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what made you step into uh, Southern Soul? Well, I'm going to tell you, um, I'm a bass player by trade. Uh, and a friend of mine by the name of Ron Mack 
called me one day and doing the you know 80s and early 90s uh mm -hmm. funk and disco was going out and funk and you know blues was always there mm -hmm. and so and r b was real heavy so a friend of mine by the name of ron max hey man uh I want you to go out of town with me with this guy named Carl Sims, do a couple of shows. We're doing blues. So I don't want to play no blues. Mm -hmm. And this is how weird this story went. They talked me into it. Well, they called me broke what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Normally that's how <laughs> decisions get made. Eh? Yeah. They called me broke with no money, you know, and trying to get in this music game. So, and I never wanted to be nothing more than a musician and sing a few songs, but we went to uh, Evergreen, Alabama, mm -hmm. and I'm going, man, this is gonna be a bunch of junk. But Carl Sims hadn't heard of him, didn't wasn't listening to that kind of music. We went there and went to a National Guard Army. Nobody on the show but Carl Sims, staying in an old hotel because there were no nice hotels there. That night when we pulled up, we couldn't get close to the building. It was mm. 2,500 people packed to see Carl Sims. We did that show on a Friday night. That Saturday, we were in Mobile, Alabama at the fairground with Bobby Womack, Betty Wright, Clarence Carter, Mar Marvin Cease, and Johnny Taylor. That Monday morning when I got back to Memphis, I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> and I toured with Carl Sims for three years straight. Wow. I quit my job. I'm a, I'm a licensed plumber by trade and now because I wanted to do a job that I would never have to work for anybody. But I was work. I quit my job that Monday when we got back. And that was a long 1993, something like that. So but for getting into music, uh, my father used to write for with Earl Randall, who wrote the song Materia Playhouse down. So I grew up around the Stax musicians, uh, Willie Mitchell. I grew up in all of that. My father took me around when I was a little boy to be, he was managing bands. So I've always been around the high rhythm section, these very well-known bands. And so I grew up with this. My father was a writer. I grew up in playing music from, you know, from a very young age. Wow. So uh, it was basically destined for you to make it happen, huh? You know, the strangest thing is, I wanted to be in music. I, mm -hmm. I I only wanted to just sing every now and then, but uh, playing for Carl, who would do shows by himself, needed someone to open up, so I had to sing. And when I got with Marvin Cease, mm -hmm. it was, you know, they saw something in me, and they knew Marvin and Charles knew I could write. So between those two people mm -hmm. and Sir Charles uh, saying, hey, man, you can go and do this yourself, because right. that, that's not really what I wanted to do. but you know, as as they say, it ain't really what you want is what God has planned for you. So I had a lot of strong people to really tell me, hey, man, go and do this. TK Soul, Mel Waiters was one of my main mentors, uh, Big Rob. These people saw something I never saw, wow. you know. So, and here I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the song, I Lost My Good Thing, like I was telling you. Yeah. I was vibing to it one day. And I'm sitting there, my head is bopping because I, I heard it over the last couple of years of just been jamming uh -huh. to it. Uh -huh. So didn't know who the artist was. Uh -huh. I just know I lost my good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I looked up, and this is recent. This is recent. Wow. I just want to put it out there recently. Wow. And I feel bad because me and no. talk. Man, you done talk, man, you done talk, man, you done talk. I put it out there, this is on me. This one is on me, because I should have done my homework a lot better. When I looked up and I saw the name, I said, God, dog. <laughs> I, man, Got a whole new conversation, huh? The last time me and you was on the phone together. Uh-huh. That's when I found out right there, right after. I said, I just got off the phone with him. I should have said something to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey man, that's okay. That's okay, man. That's now, okay. Now, when you, you was you was a band leader for a lot of these great artists, when mm -hmm. was the first time that you stood out on your own and say, I wanna I wanna get on this stage? Um the the plan was when I stopped playing for Marvin Cease was to come back and put a band together with a friend of mine who I grew up with that 
that was mostly the lead singer in all the bands we had. And um, when when I quit Marvin C., Sir Charles quit about three or four months later. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the music that you hear, his earlier music, Charles was right there when we was in the backseat of Marvin's van. So he mm -hmm. had that. So, uh, but I decided I, I wanted to do this with who, you know, was a friend. And, but he said he would do it, but he didn't want me doing the singing. He wanted to do on the singing. Right. <clears throat> and so Sir Charles called me and said, hey, man, are you ready? And I said, yeah. I said, but the guy wanted to sing most of the songs. And Charles told me, we're not going to record anybody but you. Mm -hmm. Two days later, I got a call from Marvin Cease. Mm -hmm. And he said, what's this about you want to record somebody else with all of the work you've done for yourself? And I said, well, <clears throat> you know, I thought it was being out front. I'm going to entertain. I was, you know, played my bass. I danced, singing, so I wasn't scared of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and so during that time, I was told, hey, look, man, just write. Mm -hmm. Come down here, and I'm going to record you. So I got all my songs together got my music together and went to Sir Charles when he had just gotten really, really hot. Mm -hmm. And we recorded my first CD, which is called Anytime Man. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did very well. It, you know, it didn't do what lost my, but it put me in a place that I was being noticed. Mm -hmm. So after that first CD, if you listen to my first CD and go to the last one I have, you can tell the maturity with the comfort of my vocals, but the writing and the storylines are always there. Mm -hmm. So, man, that was about, you know, that was just being told that there are people who are going to start with you, who who gonna, who's with you from the beginning won't be with you. So when I thought all these people was going to come, let's do what we used to do, they all fell off. And right. that's how I ended up doing this myself, you know. Okay. That's how I started. Now, how was it the first time that uh you stood on that stage by yourself and they Ooh. screaming Terry and they singing, <laughs> they singing your songs with you? Um, you know, the first the first time that really got me, and that was on my third album with the Lost My Good Thing, when it right. really sh and I did uh the Blues All Right tour ends in Memphis in August and I wasn't on those shows. So I told the promoter to let me do my one song. And I had about 8,500 people. Mm -hmm. And when they introduced my name, the people started screaming and they screamed till I finished that song and they screamed when I left. That was when I knew that I had made a mark, you know, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that was because if, and from that time to now it's the same thing. So that was, man, I, I don't even think you can really put it in words that first time you hear the many people screaming your name and singing your song. You never, I don't know if you can ever beat that again because knowing every word and everybody's just, you know, just totally crazy screaming your name. That was in, I think that was 2015, 14, 15, something like that. It was something serious, man. You know, you can never catch you that again now. No. How was it the first time that uh, you heard your song on the radio? Your I sound, song, what you uh, man, I sound weird. <laughs> 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 Look, dude, I'm like, oh no, this ain't gonna work, man. This don't sound good because until you find yourself, you're always trying to compare to other people's music. So right. it was the weirdest experience. I ain't gonna tell nobody. I was like, oh yeah, I'm like, oh lord, this ain't gonna work, <laughs> you know. Right. So it wasn't. It, it it was just weird. It didn't. You know, uh, to you really find, you know, your your nick where you're going to put your voice and how you're going to go across that first time was weird for me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I don't know about this, you know, so. Yeah. You know, um, with the radio stations and, and, and the way that music is, is, is being directed, um, Southern Soul keeps the love in, in, in the music. It keeps the romance in the music. It keeps what uh, my family down south would, would say, keep the courting going. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm going to agree with that. <laughs> it keeps the courting. Um, with the way you talk to a lady, the way a lady talks to you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they have some side piece songs, <laughs> mystery songs, you have yeah. all of but it's all about relationships. And it's not overbearing 
how do you feel that Southern Soul keeps relationships going or, or, or keep uh, men knowing how to talk to women? It's a, it's a constant reminder. Mm -hmm. See, it's a constant reminder because you will hear a song almost like you said you know when they say when you had been to church in a long time you go it seemed like the preacher talking to you <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a constant reminder of what you shouldn't do mm -hmm. what you should do mm -hmm. what she likes because mm -hmm. if you if you if you're trying to communicate or relate to a woman and if you don't have all the words just watch her when she listens to some music Mm -hmm. A woman will pretty much let you know what she loves, and mm -hmm. she make it easy for you now. And and it all it ninety percent of it is in the music when she's listening to it. You can tell when she starts shaking her head and and knowing the words. Mm -hmm. That's something she feels that she's gonna put right back. And she can't. And for people that can't even sing, they will try because they love it so much. So it's a constant reminder. Mm -hmm. And if you hear it, it's gonna be something in there about. At some point in your life, whether you was trying to fall in love or you got hurt or it was somebody that you hurt or somebody that hurt you. So to me, that's what it is, a constant reminder. Every time you hear uh, uh, she was playing to, uh, is anybody lonely? Yeah. You know, it's a constant reminder of what you can do and what you might want mm -hmm. or what you want to give. So that's how I see it in relationships. Now, I lost my good thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You know I got to ask, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd I come from? Did you lose your good thing? Well, let me tell you something. Uh, I think every woman I ever dated said, swear that song was about them. <laughs> uh, and I know that was about me. I'm just, I, you got to tell nobody, but I know. But I think um it wasn't necessarily about one woman it was mm -hmm. about um it was about relationships that didn't work and whether it was my fault or their fault but and i used to wonder man if i just did this differently mm -hmm. this might have turned out even better so um when i was writing that i was in a in a in a in, a, in that place Mm -hmm. you know and then i did have this one lady tell me whenever you leave me alone you're gonna write a hit song mm -hmm. i'd already started on the song <laughs> <laughs> so so and, and and i did write a hit song so that song is about probably every relationship that i was in that didn't work and i would i'm, I'm one that would go back and say man I, you know if i did this maybe it'll been better or that would have been my good thing if I'd have done this like this. So mm -hmm. I didn't write it about one particular, but just uh, relationships because uh, most of the relationships in my early years with me being gun ho about music, mm -hmm. uh, women want time and they want more security. And, and, you know, it wasn't meant for that to be with that particular woman at the time, even though uh, I would go in relationships like it was my wife. And mm -hmm. at some points that might not have been a good idea to do because if it don't work, then somebody's really, really hurt. But mm -hmm. I more or less wrote this song about just relationships that didn't work for me. Okay. You know. Okay. Now, how much, uh, how much of your songs are based on your experiences or individuals' experiences around you? I'll say it's about 50-50. Mm -hmm. About me and about other people I've been around. I'll say it's right down the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when you go on these tours, and you're 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 a mature man now. We ain't talking about back then, you know. <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah, I am talking about back then. I ain't talking about today. Okay. I'm talking about back then. Okay, okay. When you was on that road with Marvin Cease and and, and y'all were playing Motel Lover and yeah. you were a Man and all these yeah. different things, and yeah. you're seeing all these women and and things going on what is some of the wildest experience that you had you know we, this is a family show uh, wildest <laughs> experience that you had on uh, tour with Marvin C's oh man it's family show huh 
<laughs> and, and remember who I said I played for Marvin. Right, right Marvin C. <laughs> Good Lord, you know, them two things don't go together. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I think the wildest thing that happened to me is that I met this lady and we were, I can't even tell you the city was in, but anyway, this I met this lady and we uh I forgot the hotel. Anyway, we was all in the lobby, and this lady was and started just drinking. Man, she just she just got drunk. Mm -hmm. This lady, but she looked so good, and so we sitting there hugging, and we all hugged up, and we downstairs, and I said, okay, we gonna come on, we come up to the room, and she said, well, now let's sit here and drink a little more. Sitting there, and the lady said, she said, Randall, why you keep putting me out of the house? I said, huh. This lady called me her ex-husband name 20 times while we were sitting there talking. The problem was she looked so good, hell, I started answering her. I ain't gonna put you out there. <laughs> Come on, let's just go up to this room. No, you just gonna put me out. She was drunk. She called me her husband, I promise you. And she, you don't have to put me out. Every time you get mad, I'm like, but she looked so good. I'm constantly trying to get her to go upstairs. And I start answering. I ain't going to do it no more. I promise. That's probably one of the craziest things that ever happened, man. <laughs> I hope don't too many people hear that. But that's... That, that's... <laughs> well, they don't hear it. <laughs> well, that was one of the craziest things. I mean, man, I, 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 still, I told my partners about it. We couldn't believe me. He said, man, she, I said, she kept calling me. I said, who was running? You know, we've been married for 25 years. And you keep putting me out, but I didn't want to let her go, man, because she looked so good. I told her, I ain't going to put you out no more. I promise. You just come up to each dad. Let's go at this elevator, man. So <laughs> that's probably the craziest thing that ever happened. <laughs> oh, man. Now, that was a long, 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 long time. Yeah, that's long, that's long, 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 long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's now I'm old, man. I, I come off that stage, my feet hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go sit down somewhere, bro. Uh -uh. Now, Southern Soul has broken into like two, three different genres now. Mm -hmm. Inside of it, you have the actual soul singers, the one, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, the trail riders, mm -hmm. and um. What's that other one? It's another one. It's the it's the line dancers, right? The right. line dancers, right? And when you listen to certain songs and certain individuals, you know what category they fall in. Yeah. Um, when I listen to yourself and uh, Vic Allen, you know, Sir Charles, individuals like that, I always look for the soul singers. Mm -hmm. Um, the jook and the hook is mostly for the trail riders, right? You know, and uh, and for those who don't know what the jook and the hook is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go ahead and tell them, <laughs> you know, that they just catching that beat and in, 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 in that hook of the song, that's it, <laughs> it was what's holding them down, that's it. And I learned I learned that from Mr. Omar Cunningham. So Mr. Omar, thank you for that for that yep. interview. That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, the goat is a great man. Good, oh, good yeah. man. He really um, is. When you listen to certain music, who do you listen to? You know, what I'm saying to to inspire you to to push to the next level, or do you listen to someone's music and be like, you know what, that's a hot song. I'm a I need to get down here and get in the studio. Uh, well, as of lately, King George. <laughs> as of lately, King George, man. Uh, my God, I can't even listen to his music, you know, mm -hmm. because it's so good. You'll find yourself writing just like that. So I, I don't listen to it. I've heard of it, but it's just that good. The brother is extremely, extremely talented. Yeah, um, nice. You know, I try... I, there, are, there are artists out there that you know that I really like. Omar, like for instance, um, mm -hmm. I'm a you know I write stories, so I'm all about that storyline, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sir Charles. But I have a way of uh, doing mine that when I go to writing, I don't listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, because you know, it'll it sometimes it will influence you. When I'm like right now, that's the stage I'm in. We're still writing and cutting records. I don't listen to anybody. I don't listen to the radio to listen to anybody's music, and I stay focused on what I'm doing because uh, I've, I've found a niche for myself in this business, and uh, I try to stay true to that. Um, don't get me in there. Are a lot of people with good songs. And, and like I said, they're, they're really, really good. So I try not to listen to anybody. And and once I finish mine and I put it out there, honestly, once I do it and mm-hmm. we start performing, I don't go back. I heard Lost My Good Thing for the first time in probably uh, seven or eight months. And I was playing to myself going, okay, that was pretty good. But I try not to go back and just you know, the music I have in me and put that down. So I don't really listen to anybody once I'm writing. Well, I can't say I I, I heard it today. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it today with and, and what played behind it was soul music of Vic Allen. So yeah. I can't sit here and tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it took yeah. me two, six, seven, but you yeah. know, I make sure that uh and that's another thing, you know, growing up in New York and then uh having to relocate to Mississippi as mm-hmm. a youngster, you know, as far as like last year in high school, you mm-hmm. learn to respect the uh, Southern soul music yeah. because it wasn't being played on the radios like it was being played in Mississippi. No, sir. Yeah. And to get the whole experience of Southern soul, you got to go into one of them holes in the walls. Yes, I'm telling you what. You got to go into one of them hole in the walls yeah. where back then they were selling a they were selling the pints and and half pints and and and, yep. and chips. They wasn't Fish selling mixed drinks then. No, 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 no. Well, no cranberry juice, straight whiskey, <laughs> straight whiskey, <laughs> or a quarter beer. Yeah, or a quarter beer. So, um, when you go into these places and you look at the room and and you see how it just takes over people because all week long, everybody's looking forward to that Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. That's that break. That's, that's that, that break. break. Yeah. So when you write your music, are you writing that music so they can, they can let it all go? Most definitely, man. Most definitely. The song I wrote called on the back road. That's where the part is at. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's, that's where it is, you know, a place I can hang my head where they make chicken wings, you know, <laughs> that's, that's my song. So yeah, most definitely because, you know, even now with the hole in the wall, it don't take a lot of money to have a good time. No. So it doesn't matter what your financial situation is, you know, when you can go and relax and hear the music that you like to wind you down, there's nothing like it. So I, I'm definitely when I start my music, mm-hmm. I, I I envision the video and the live performance, mm-hmm. and what it'll feel like when you just sit in the club listening to it. So, I envision all that when I'm writing, all of mm-hmm. it. I, my first time, I was in the hole in the wall, it was way way back in the day. <laughs> I was a teenager. I was about seven, 18, 17, 18, because you know they didn't card back then. No. Not they didn't call it back then. I, I ain't gonna say the name of the spot over there in, in <laughs> Kilmike and Lodi, Mississippi. I ain't gonna yes. say the name of the spot. But uh, I'm sitting there. No, I was in Vaden. Vaden was the first time I, I've been in there in the whole in the world, mm-hmm. Vaden. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking. And what I noticed when the music get good to them, their feet get to tap. Yeah. So that means they want to dance. That's right. So I learned that you can build a whole relationship on one Southern soul song in the whole (laughs) room. Yes, you can. Because you catch the person on that right song. Y'all finna leave up out there. Yes. (laughs) You know what? You learned something when you came down here. (laughs) You surely did. That is for sure, man. That was the whole, listen. That's the whole reason you go to the hole in the wall, you're going to see somebody. And if mm-hmm. they in the hole in the wall, y'all already on the same level of thinking. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. You're yes. on the same level of thinking right there. So you already got that in common. It ain't much left. <laughs> <laughs> it, y'all already got that in common. 
This oh yeah, oh yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to worry about being out there because it's off in the woods. That's it. That's <laughs> it's it. off in the and woods. Thing you want to do, and if you just happen to own a Lincoln Town car, you all right. <laughs> <laughs> You might, if you own a Lincoln Time car, you might just need to pull up in a bush or something. But that's, you know, that's a long time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a <laughs> long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> Mosquitoes are a lot worse now than they would then. So no. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Them, them days over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knees, knees is bad. Can't do it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But. When we get to talking about your music and the impact that it has on the individuals around, mm -hmm. people don't realize that as an artist, you not only take care of yourself, but you take care of the ones that's around you. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and who are the engineers, and if, if I might ask, who are the oh, yeah. engineers that you like to work with that brings out that great Terry Wright sound? Man, uh, a guy, I got actually two, uh, a guy by the name of James Jackson and Jay, we call him, I'm going to give you a little of his background. Jay played keyboards for Denise LaSalle for years. Mm. Uh, he re He's recorded Karen Wolf, uh, myself, um, from Reich, Denise, several people. And he's he's one of the main producers. Another guy, <clears throat> uh, Mike Rayford, we call him Mike D. Mm -hmm. Mike recorded the song with Vic and I call this over um, the How Sweet As You Can, the, uh, the Back Road CD, all but that one song, who mm -hmm. also recorded Sir Charles, uh, man, Al Capone, the rapper. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. These guys, and, and Mike actually plays in my band, uh, these guys over man 20 years have nailed the Terry Wright sound down and what what I had to learn how to do by being a musician myself my songs are wrote from my baseline so I give them the idea of what I want mm -hmm. what I had to learn to do what I had to learn to do was to get out of their way once I give them those patterns mm -hmm. so once I learned how to do that got out of their way and then come back so okay I like this this and this and uh but those two guys and they're both here in memphis i mean mega producers man mega producers and not only from the tracks where a lot of artists have to get the music over here record over here mm -hmm. when you get with these guys you get the music the recording the production everything in one place you get it all you gotta do is take it and get it mastered and start sending it out mm -hmm. now people don't know that southern soul Every artist in Southern Soul is basically independent. Yep. So when it comes down to promoting and pushing and marketing um, your music, and you had to explain that to a young artist coming up, um, how would you how would you explain it to them? Well, I'm gonna give you an idea. Uh, I'm gonna give you something that I did that worked, and it worked well. Uh, when I put out "Lost My Good Thing," I was doing a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. I own that. I own all my music. Uh, I have a couple of people that help me write. And what I did was when the big artists put out their records, you'll notice you'll see them on TV, radio, you'll see posters, pictures all over social media. Mm -hmm. And they already have a name. So if you don't have the finances to do that, mm -hmm. when you get your record and send it to whatever record company, I mean, a radio station that you send it to, Mm -hmm. Wherever there's a concert, and if it's big, find out who that promoter is. Tell him to give you 10 minutes on his stage. Mm -hmm. You don't want no money. 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. I've explained this to several artists who say, oh, man, you're doing a free show? Well, let me just tell you how that worked. First Blues All Right Tour, I had three shows. Well, they was going to Atlanta, Detroit, other places. I asked them, could I, I'll never forget, in Atlanta at the Fox Theater, could I sing my one song? They said, okay. I sung Lost My Good Thing, got a standing ovation, and I did the Fox Theater for the next three years. Wow. I was already becoming a big artist, making money, doing shows, but there were places I hadn't been. They knew my music, but didn't see my face. Mm -hmm. And I've told artists, 
right now, as big as I am now, if mm -hmm. there's a place where I've never performed mm -hmm. and they've never seen me and they got a show there and they got eight, 9,000 people there, mm -hmm. yes, I will go. I don't need a dime. Let me get, give me 15 minutes. Well, let 15 minutes out of those seven or 8,000 people and they realize who I am, somebody's going to call me to come back. Right. So I would tell any artist, promote yourself. Nobody can beat you promoting yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're getting in this music business to make a lot of money when mm -hmm. you start, I suggest you find something else to do. Because if you're blessed to get a big hit right off the top, mm -hmm. you still got so many other artists. So they're going to work you, but you're still going to have to work with them at their price until you get to a certain point. Mm -hmm. But until that day happens, promote yourself. That means anywhere there's a crowd of people, I'm not telling you you have to sing free all the time, but if don't nobody know you in St. Louis and mm -hmm. they got a show in St. Louis mm -hmm. and they say it's a sellout, that's where you want to be. Mm. You know, because if you don't have the capital to, to buy time at the radio station, ads on the radio station, on the TVs, the next best thing is to be seen. They used to tell me, out of sight, out of mind. Right. That's how I got all of the shows I got all in Chicago, Detroit, Milwaukee, by being where the people were at, listening to my music, but never saw me. So mm. promote yourself. You know, and that's, that's the best thing I can tell you, wherever you go. <clears throat> so now I was going to ask you, matter of fact, I'm going to ask you, during the pandemic, how did that affect your music? Did you go in there and you just grind out for your music because it was hard to get shows and, and we was all behind the doors? Oh, uh, you know what, man? <laughs> when the pandemic happened, looked like I made more money, music, people buying it online than I did when I when it wasn't going. Mm -hmm. I I I had been grinding for since 2014 all the way up to the pandemic, nonstop. Mm -hmm. Um I actually took a break. I didn't write anything. I just took a break. Um, I was, thank the Lord, financially stable. Mm -hmm. I uh, it, it gave me a minute to invest some money in some properties and, and, and do that and really reevaluate what I was doing. I really honestly took a break. But for some reason, man, online music was just leaving. They was just buying it. They was downloading it. They was just doing it, man. And, and, and I was like, man, can't get no better than this. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wasn't worried. Uh, I, I just was, I, I don't know, uh, God had put me in a place by the time that happened that I just didn't worry. I got a picture I put up on Facebook, man, I had a full of beard and everything. I was on a lake. Mm -hmm. And so I just took a step back. And that's probably why I got all this energy now to write and get in the studio because I needed that break. Mm -hmm. I needed that break because I went from playing with people to doing this, to doing my own thing. And when you're, when you're trying to promote yourself, even when you got shows, you're taking everything. So you are literally doing 40, 50 shows a year and mm -hmm. three or four shows a weekend. Uh, and, and I had to take, I had to bag up. So the pandemic was a good thing for me, man, to just stop for a minute. Okay, get get a chance to reevaluate. Yes, that was the biggest thing. That was the biggest thing. That's great. That's great. Now, where can our audience see Mr. Terry Wright? Because if you didn't see him in the summertime, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, the man is hard to catch up with. I'm telling you right now. If well, you didn't see him in the summertime. <laughs> I tell you what, this is what's getting ready to happen. So uh, next year mm -hmm. uh, will be 20 years for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting ready to release a lot of music. Now we'll be releasing dates in January and you can go on my Facebook page or my uh, fan page, which is on the Terry right. And we'll be releasing dates and release time. So if everything goes right, I'm gonna let this out of the bag. If everything goes where we plan, before the end of the year, we will release a single. Uh, the single is called Old School Love. That's going to probably be the name of the album called Old School Love. Mm -hmm. And so we're just about finished with it now. So we'll be releasing dates in January where we'll be. And uh, and we're going to be celebrating all year. And we plan on doing a few red carpet events for my 20 years. Mm -hmm. 
So y'all look out for that. Yeah, and look out for uh real to real three sixty to be on that red carpet doing the media. Yeah, and you listen, I definitely <laughs> want you there. That's who I want to get my first interview with. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm going to be easy to find that day. <laughs> oh, oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. Now, with uh, a lot of people didn't know that Southern Soul had their own award shows as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you feel that uh, mainstream hasn't opened the doors for Southern Soul? No, I don't. I, I know they haven't yet. Uh, in fact, because... Uh, just this past weekend, uh, Sunday, I I was honored at the ZBT Awards in Houston, I, and I got the uh, Icon Award of the Year. So, uh, no, they haven't. And the strange thing about that is that a lot of R&B artists are on the same shows that we're on. That you know, you'll see a Keith Sweat with TK Soul or Frankie Beverly Mays with Calvin Richardson and all that. So, you know. Uh, I don't know what would have to happen for them to do that. We got the numbers when it comes to, uh, you know, for the uh, media, the concerts, the festivals. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I really wouldn't know what would have to happen. But no, they hadn't. As far as I say, they hadn't opened the doors, you know, for his awards and what we would have to do, you know, to get there. Definitely. And want to say congratulations on getting the Icon Award. Because that's that's major, and yeah. we were supposed we was asked to come, but we was asked yeah. to come at the last minute. Oh, you know, oh. and you know, you're yeah. coming from the northeast, yeah, going to Texas. Last minute just ain't Ooh. gonna work. <laughs> no, 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 no. You want the, the the price of the flight would kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Let alone trying to get there, trying to and, and then trying to get the hotel room, and then yeah. you know it just didn't pan out, but. We would have loved to have been there to support you and, yeah, and interview nice, man. you there. And hopefully uh, during the summertime, we can catch you at some of these conferences because we'll be at some of the Southern Soul conferences and uh, like the one in Atlanta. And we will be there. We will uh, be interviewing artists and stuff. So I would love to, to have an opportunity to interview you down there. I'll tell you what, if you would send me the information and the date, I will make sure that I'm there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Greatly appreciate because, like yep. I said, hard man to catch up with because <laughs> you know it's 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 funny, but it's not funny because when you're a busy man, that lets you know that you're doing something right. Yeah. You know, when it's hard to catch up with an individual, that lets you know that the music is great. The music is good. It's going well, yeah. and you want to see someone like yourself in a position where they can uh be busy uh yeah. and and not take it as a slight because it was because like i said man you've been on the phone we talked <laughs> yeah you, phone, you, you yeah. know what i mean it's not yeah. an issue so that's yeah. definitely not it and like i was telling people i said man might well say that's my homeboy because shoot i talked to him <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well you know man and, I, and that's what i that's what i tell people um you 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 know, and, and, and just like you just said, and that definitely showing me what you do and how real you are about what you're doing. Because when you know, I'll give you an instance, for instance, Charles, when we was working on my first CD, I might have drove to Jackson, Mississippi a hundred times, never got anything done. Mm -hmm. uh, because he was one, of, he was the hottest thing in the country. But he mm -hmm. said, no, you got to go here. So you never give up and you never mad about it, especially if when you go on the phone with somebody say hey, i called you 20 times and couldn't get you well mm -hmm. i don't mean no harm but this is what i'm doing you mm -hmm. know it ain't nothing personal and once you get that mentality you ain't mad at you hey man i finally called you that's why when we talk i'm saying hey, look we both had the same thing on our mind we're gonna make this happen today this man keeps setting this up i keep missing it and then the last time i couldn't catch him mm -hmm. and wasn't nothing to be upset about it nothing we and now we here you yeah know? that's it you know <laughs> and 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 I laugh and joke about it. I talked to my partner and I told Kay, I said, I said, man, I'm going to have to go down there and just hog time and hold him to a chip. I said, because I'm getting this interview. Getting man, this interview. And look, you know, Vic Allen, Terry, did you? Because the, the, the first one we set up, Vic called Terry, uh, did you get your interview set up? I said, no, not just Vic. Terry, 
hey man, you need to talk with you need to do this. I said, you know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to get to Terry. So that's my brother. He was on my case. So he had to call me this time. When I saw your test, I'm gonna call him man. When you call me, I say, man, today you got me. You got me because I want to do this interview. Cause I'd already heard about this new guy that was doing interviews that was you want to get on this. Uh-huh. You know, so I'd already heard about you. Hey, man, you want to do this interview. This is who you want to do this interview with. You mm-hmm. want to do this. This guy got some real stuff going. So mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't no question. I was going to get you. Right. <laughs> you were going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, first of all, I want to say, I want to salute Vic and his wife, his beautiful wife, yeah. because um, we had a great time with Vic. Um, and like I said, the same thing with you, the same thing with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I pick up the phone. If I call him, he answers within two, three rings. I don't, it's not like uh, the superstar thing or what have you. Oh, and no. we have great conversations. Oh, yeah, man. And, yeah. and I appreciate that he was able to make this connection. Oh, yeah. He made a few connections for me. Uh, Jay Hammer. I got mm-hmm. out when we talked to Jay Hammer. And, mm-hmm. and everybody who know me know I love part. It's part of time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. And, uh, <laughs> Let me tell you the story about Jay Hummer right quick. Uh, me and Vic sometimes will do our own shows, uh-huh. and I didn't have Hammer's number. Uh-huh. So I called him on FaceTime, but I was trying to dial a number, but I FaceTimed it. Uh-huh. So he talked to me. We got the information. We get to the venue of the show, and he said, Terry right. let me ask you a question. I was up. He said, how the hell are you FaceTiming? You know I'm blind. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I thought what you, and he just bust out laughing. He said, told the wife, wait till I see Terry right. I said, man, I'm gonna try to you. I thought I'm trying to call you. Yeah, out of here, you gonna FaceTime me and you know I'm blind. <laughs> that tickled him so bad, man, he couldn't stop laughing. I said, man, I feel oh. bad now. <laughs> oh man. You know, uh, I think that the interview was okay with him, but we had a little complications because mm-hmm. I my partner didn't know he was blind. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. And we were trying to get him connected on the show. And please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. My partner said, you can't see it. <laughs> I know what the hell I'm going to say. He probably said, hell no, I can't see it. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> I said, oh, and before I couldn't say nothing because it was like, I said, oh, so I texted him. I was like, man, he blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm a good guy. I know he laughed at that. Yeah, man, he's a good guy, man. And, you know, I listen to, like I said, that's my rotation. And mm. now... Um, I'm starting to listen to a lot of these younger artists, mm-hmm. um, like Jay Shanae. She has yes. a very, very powerful voice, very mm-hmm. powerful voice. And um, when you start listening, and that's some of the things that I look for, you know, so when I'm listening to an artist. Mm-hmm. Because those who grew up in Mississippi, especially in the Delta, uh, 104.3 WGNL, yeah. has what they call the blues cruise on Saturdays, all day long blues. Mm-hmm. And those are the artists that you want to listen to. Yep. All day long. And uh, you realize that in different areas, you got hip hop has the young folks. And they have the young folks down in, in Mississippi and Memphis. Mm-hmm. But when them blues come on, the young folks love the blues. They surely do. They surely do, man. Let me tell you, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama, bro, they love it. They love it. They love it. You right about that, man. They love the blues. <laughs> now, Mr. Terry, where can our people get your music? Man, all you have to do is Google my name. You can get it from Spotify to iTunes. It is basically everywhere. I'm blessed. Just Google Terry Wright. That's all you have to do, and it will pull up anywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the blessing I have. Just Google my name, Terry Wright. Uh, you can just type in, I don't lost my good thing, and it's going to pull up my whole catalog. So I, that's all you have to do is Google Terry Wright, and you can get it anywhere, all I, social media outlets. I tell you, uh, if you 
been under a rock somewhere and you haven't heard I lost my good <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't please don't be done lost your good thing and listen and to And listen to it. No, no, no. Cause I'm gonna tell you something, man. The stories I used to hear when that song first came out. Uh I had one weekend where I, I, I thought I wasn't gonna make it. A man, the, the head of security guy with me stood by my room, didn't say two words to me, mm-hmm. walked me to the stage, halfway to the stage, he pulled his phone out and showed me a headstone and said it was his mother's favorite song. And that's what they put on the headstone. I lost my good thing. I said, you show me this five minutes before I walk on stage. Blew <laughs> me away, man. So, and I, that song has brought some weird stuff, man. I had a, there was a police officer that had a wreck New Year's Eve mm-hmm. in Memphis, lost control of his car. That next year, his wife asked me, she did a party in his honor, and asked me to sing that song because it was his favorite song. I kept saying, are you sure? Mm-hmm. I mean, this lady literally gave, I think she gave me like $2,000 to do this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it gets real deep when people tell you their story. Right. About that song, you know. You know, and, and that's 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 a question I was going to ask you. Um, the impact of your music on people, when you hear it, how does, you know what I'm saying, what do that take you to? What, like, what place does that take you to when mm-hmm. you hear stories like that? It gets emotional sometimes. Um because you, when you think about somebody that will take their last dime to come hear you sing and or couldn't really afford that ticket but came anyway mm-hmm. to hear a song and they tell you that story, mm-hmm. it, uh, it, it lets you know that you don't take this for granted. I, I, I never have. I, TK Soul tell me a lot, man. I'm, you, 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 Terry, you, you're a big entertainer. Keep that in mind when you're out and about and doing things and how you carry yourself because I, I've never saw it. I still don't see it to this day. But mm-hmm. when people take the time to come to your concerts, to take pictures with you uh, and tell you their story about a song you wrote that took them through this. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it gets emotional because, you know, most of the time it's a situation you ain't never had to deal with like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's it does something for me. And, and you know, it takes lots. Of, and it also makes me stay humble that anytime somebody will come out and see me, I'm going to give you everything I got. Mm-hmm. Everything I got. I'm going to leave it all right there. Every song, if I can get them all in, I will. So, you know, that's what it do for me. Mm. Wow. Like I said, uh, Mr. Terry, we about to come up on the end of the show. And I want to take this time out to, to thank you because I really appreciate uh, rescheduling, rescheduling, rescheduling. Because <laughs> no, no, honestly, because you could have just said, you know what, this ain't gonna work. We done tried it a couple of times, and this ain't gonna work. And mm-hmm. we both was persistent, and we was on the same page. And I, I want to take this time and thank you for coming on Real to Real three hundred and sixty, mm-hmm. and. Of course, congratulations at the ZBT Awards because it's mm-hmm. the Icon Award was was well deserved. Thank you, thank you. Because you have yeah. definitely left your mark in the Southern Soul industry, and hopefully that young artists who are coming up are taking a page out of your book and thank they you. learning how to uh, perform, write music, and also to promote and market themselves. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You are truly an icon in the industry. Um, headliner, when individuals get an opportunity, please go out and see Mr. Terry Wright. Get an opportunity. Go on Amazon Music, go on Apple Music, go on Spotify, all, all the all streaming services, and download that music because you will not be disappointed <laughs> at all. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Brother, look, man, and I thank you, man, for being persistent. I'm listening, and then, you know, uh, now that you've gotten to talk to me, you can tell I ain't the kind of guy that would say, hey, forget that. It was going to have to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say, man, look, I'm sorry I'm late, but mm-hmm. I'm here. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's my thing. Hey, look, I'm coming. That's mm-hmm. all I can tell you. I ain't going to – I'll never get beside myself because – and say, oh, I ain't, I ain't worried about that. Uh, anybody that will take the time to put you on anything that they have mm-hmm. is a blessing for me. So, you know, thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> and also, too – um. 
whenever you have anything new, anything you want to promote, whether it's your tour dates, whether it's your new music, just mm -hmm. let me know and I can bring you back on. And the next time I guarantee you, my DJ will be on and we'll be able to play all your music the way we like to play it, to put it, to push you out there the way you're supposed to, because a legend okay. like yourself deserves mm -hmm. to be honored in the fashion that he that he is. And to me, you're an icon, you're a legend yeah. in the Super Soul industry, and I appreciate you so much. Hey man, look, thank you. Gonna be calling you soon. And listen, don't forget to send me the information about the summits. I would love to be there, man. Oh, definitely, definitely. We're gonna um what I do is I'm going to um send it to you and then two give me two minutes after the show and we'll discuss it from there. Just hold on Great. for two minutes, all right? Great, Thank got you. Gentlemen. This right here has been the great, the icon, the legend. <laughs> Very right. See y'all right? somewhere soon. <laughs> See y'all soon. <laughs> Yo, ladies and gentlemen, we starting to come to the end of the show. Right now, I want to take the time out and thank our guests for coming on. Also, too, we want to make sure that y'all listening and subscribing and tell a friend and tell a friend and keep sharing because we're going to keep bringing y'all the real content. Knowing so, DJ K Wise, my God, brother, God, check God, us up out of here, son. True it, Peace. True it, true it, true it. I want to give a big shout out to the nation of guards and nurses, and to all the human families on planet Earth. I say peace. But to our subscribers, those who continue to watch and listen to the show, each and every time we come on, I give a big shout out to love, peace, and happiness to you. The peace of man, woman, and child of the you and our verse. It's time for us to disperse. We bring the best, not the worst. We thank you once again for tuning in to the real, the real 360. Bring a friend to hit that like and subscribe so we continue to grow to bring more knowledge and wisdom to you. Upon our show, you make it possible for us to do what we do. Now it's time I end it just the way I bring it. Hey!